Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, back with the second video of the Wooly Candle Mat Club. But this video is really for anyone interested in how does all this wool applique work? As I mentioned in the very first video, I wanted to open up our Block the Monks and Clubs to not just people who got into that club and bought those kits, but anyone really wanting to know about the really fun process of how does all this wool applique work? And what is this Shabby Fabrics and what is this all about? That way you could be able to peer much deeper into the process and decide if this is something that you might want to try out. And again, of course, I want to encourage you, it's a lot of fun. Um, so in this video today, we've got all of our shapes down. We covered that in our first video. And today it's like, how do we use thread? What's the different type of thread that we would be using for wool applique? um to stitch those shapes down and of course it's always going to be the stitch of your choice whether you use a straight stitch a blanket stitch or something else completely different so you can do that by hand or by machine i like doing things by machine i have such limited time i'm always working on new projects that as much as i love doing a lot of handwork sometimes i do the machine sewing because it's a little bit faster and the neat thing about the 12 weight thread set that we have is whether you prefer to uh, sew that by machine or by hand, it's just as beautiful and the uh, thread is completely versatile and you'll have the option to choose your favorite method. So I went ahead and just loaded in that kind of pumpkin-y orange color um, into that and I have a black 50 weight uh, thread in my bobbin. You always want to go ahead and practice on some scrap a wool um, and just make sure your tension is where you want that. I went ahead and checked that before we rolled the cameras. I did not make any tension changes on my machine and things are sewing along just fine. Um, because I'm dealing with some sh smaller shapes, I did shorten up my stitch length just a touch so you could again play with that if you want. So we're gonna just come over here. Um, I think when I do a machine applique, I try to strategize of how can I stitch down as many shapes as possible before I have to make a thread change. So I wouldn't just complete one entire pumpkin. I'm gonna stitch down all of my orange shapes all the way around my project and then change out my thread so I can reduce the number of times that I change. So with my pumpkin, and I can just bring the sample over here just to show you what we did so you can see me attempt to mimic that. Now the lady that we had stitched this down did a fabulous job and you can see how nicely she stitched very evenly around that edge um, here. And it looks like around the witch's hat, she did a little bit of a blanket stitch there and it was quite small. But you can see here later on, this is some handwork. So really, if you wanna do a straight stitch, blanket stitch everywhere, it's really your choice. So I'm just gonna start off and repeat what she's done or try to repeat what she's done so well and just do a straight stitch. And as you would expect, I'm gonna back up and just secure my stitches and then I'm just gonna get going. Back up there. So I just wanted to show you that process real quick. So you can just do the straight stitch. You could stop here. You can see how that next piece kind of starts up here. Let's look at hers real quick. See if she made that little jump. It looks like she went ahead and I think stopped it here. And then, you know, you, you always want to kind of plan out your approach for how you're gonna stitch these things down so that you can minimize, the again, the starts and stops and the, and the number of times that you have to make a change. So you, want, you definitely don't wanna just you know, start here. You're always gonna to wanna to start somewhere where you can get a nice long run and stop, and then start here again, a nice long run and stop. And then maybe here, you know, maybe start there, stop. Some people even jump over that, start again, and then they clip their threads later. Now with the blanket stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and actually change my thread out to the purple. And I'm gonna adjust my machine and we'll go ahead and do a blanket stitch. I want you to see that and how 
it, isn't it, I just love that really with the 12 weight thread, the, it, it's not meant to be invisible. It's meant to be part of the beauty of the project. And you want that to be showing and you can see how that 12 weight thread just has a bulkiness that really shows it off and it's, it's quite beautiful. So I'll go ahead and change my thread and change my setting to a blanket stitch and I'll be right back and we'll go ahead and stitch down the witch's hat. Okay, so I have my 12 weights and of course you're gonna pick the color in your thread set that you know just has the best match. So I grabbed this one here and I, it's so fun sewing with these different threads because you know, as a quilter, I'm always using kind of a neutral thread and it's never seen. So it's really actually fun to showcase this beautiful fabric and get to do types of stitches I don't normally get to do. Okay, so we'll get going with a blanket stitch. Now, if this isn't a stitch you're comfortable with or do very often, you're going to want to practice that. You're also going to want to absolutely engage the needle down feature in your machine so you can do that pivot the way that I did. So let's keep stitching that down. It's not fast. As I see I need to, to turn, see I can see the shapes turning. Just pivot a little bit. I can see I need to pivot right there. I'm gonna pivot again. So let's see how we did. So you can see that like we were saying that the thread, don't hide it. Get comfortable, go ahead and practice. If you're comfortable, then go ahead and proceed. If you're like, I really am not comfortable with this, then you may want to consider using some 50 weight, even a 60 weight, something even lighter and doing a simple whip stitch that's kind of a blind stitch and you don't even really see the stitching. But I really wanna encourage you to go ahead and practice this on some scrap wool, some scrap fabric really, because it's really kind of learning when to pivot and how much to pivot. And then you simply translate that into wool. So we'll come back front here. And what, what we did with our machine sewing is we just kind of flip flop back and forth between a straight stitch and a blanket stitch and just kind of when it made sense and the shape wasn't too intricate, we went for a cute blanket stitch. And when it was like, ooh, it's kind of intricate, we just went for a simple straight stitch. Um, again, please join, hey, join our Facebook group. While this is a video that's just out for the world to see and be able to welcome you into the wonderful world of wool, the fun part about jumping into the Candle Mat Club and being part of our Facebook group. A, it's open to anyone that would like to jump in. It's great to be able to make friends there and you know, show off your progress. Um, you'll learn tips and tricks from other people that are also in the program. It's really a lot of fun being a part of those groups. Um, and now for the next one, we'll be coming back and I'll be getting into this one, which is more of that thicker embellishing thread. We'll be doing that by hand. We've got some simple stitches here. I'll be going over that. So if that's new to you, or maybe you've done that a long time ago, we can refresh you on that. And again, if you want to be able to jump into the Candle Mat Club, do that, or be able to take that knowledge and apply that to whatever project that you're working on. So I'll see you on that next video.